Hi guys, Alex here, and I'm back to post a response to my Blonde on Blonde album discussion thread, which I put up a couple of days ago. Um, I've been lucky enough to get a couple of replies on this already, and uh, very grateful for that. Um, thank you to Mr. Hall of Fame and uh, Led1995 Zeppelin for their responses. Um, some really interesting answers, and uh, uh, yeah, just uh, great to hear what other people think about this album. And uh, yeah. Uh, without rambling on too much, I'll, I'll get on and do my best at answering this. Right then, so uh, I'll start off by showing you uh, the copies of Blonde on Blonde that I have. Um, I've probably already shown you them all before, but um, yeah, I'll just uh, quickly show you. I got the uh, stereo um, CD here. Um, probably the nicest sounding out of my CDs. Um, and the other CD I have is uh, the mono version which I got, of course, in my uh, Bob Dylan mono box set. Really nice what they've done, and cre recreated the, the gatefold. So they've done a great job with that, but I, I'd probably say I prefer the, uh, the stereo in terms of sound. And then, of course, I have my uh, vinyl version. This is a uh, 1967 uh, reprint of this album, but it sounds just awesome. Uh, it's uh, really in pristine condition, and... Uh, well, um, listen to this already probably three or four times. It's just that good. On it's, it's just amazing. It sounds so much better than the CD. I can't tell you. Um, so yeah, those are my three copies of Blonde on Blonde. And um, yeah, um, next question I said was, does the album live up to its hype? Um, <laughs> and uh, I yeah, lives up to and uh, surpasses its hype by a long, long way in my opinion. Um, I think I might have been a, bit, a little bit naive in my uh, reply to Spellerine's uh, thread on Sgt. Pepper because I was saying how there must have been loads of hype surrounding Sgt. Pepper and everyone was spe expecting a lot from the Beatles at that time but I've seen some other s replies since then and people are saying that there wasn't actually that much hype in the 60s surrounding albums um, and that has kind of increased as time has, has passed on. Um, so I may have been a bit naive saying that there was loads of hype in the, in the 60s um, surrounding the whole music industry and, the, and these big artists. Um, so, you know, I'm still not 100% sure on how much hype there would have been surrounding this album, but yeah, I think I think one thing you can say is that um, that some people really didn't like this. I mean, uh, that that's evident. I mean, when you just look at the videos and the, uh, the shows he did on his tours in the mid-60s, uh, I mean, sorry, the, the 1966 World Tour, I mean, you just have to go to that and you can see that you know, people weren't liking what Dylan was doing at this point. And, uh, you know, pe some people were really hating it and they, they were showing it as well on those tours. So I'm sure there was a lot of negative, um, a lot of negative atmosphere around this album as well, um, because people just simply didn't like Dylan going electric. They, that's just how it was. I mean, um, looking back, the people, you know, people can consider this album a masterpiece looking back but at the time it was some people really frowned upon it I mean uh, yeah so uh, yeah who knows but I, I think um, I think this album certainly does live up to to its hype I mean whatever your definition of hype is I mean it's quite a hard question thinking about it but yeah um, so opinions on Dylan um, specifically this point in his career and do I like the band I mean um, as I've said in, in other videos before, I mean, uh, this is my favourite year of Dylan's career, 1966, I believe he was at his peak. I mean, I just love, I just love his rebellious kind of attitude um, to, to pretty much everything at that, at that stage. I mean, he, pretty much, he was pretty much sick of the, the whole scene and the whole um, voice of a generation thing and uh, people calling him a folk singer, protest singer, that whole thing. He just wanted to rock out, you know, he just wanted to to play his music, he wanted to take his music in any direction he he could take it. He didn't want you know people limiting him and uh, and uh, you know. So I, I just love the whole rebellious attitude that he had in that in that year, and specifically on the tour. But it, you can hear it and, and see it on this album as well. Um, so yeah, it's just the fact that people were were really kind of almost behind Dylan at this point. They were still stuck in the past, I guess. Um, and they wanted him him back the way he was back in 1963-64 when he was writing Blown in the Wind and the times there are changing. I mean, people just wanted that. I mean, it must have been out of just pure nostalgia, nostalgia I guess. And uh, 
and I guess that's why there was all this negative reactions um, to hit to everything, pretty much everything he was doing at that point. I mean, um, but looking back, it's it's kind of admirable how he how he just stared, um, you know, took all that criticism and, and didn't um, didn't give in to it. I guess and. Um, you know, I think if he had given into it, we wouldn't have seen an album like Blonde on Blonde. So, yeah. Um, I I think I think the one thing I do like about this this stage of his career is is his voice. I think his voice is probably at, at its best in 1966 on this album. I know some people kind of take the mick out of his voice. Um, it's kind of like lazy, um, almost kind of. Uh, he almost sounds like he's stoned every time he's singing, you know what I mean? But, um, but uh, to me, this voice is genius. This voice is uh, this voice can do so much. This voice can project so many moods, and uh, I guess that's what I love about it. And this voice was actually kind of this '66 voice that we that we hear on Blonde on Blonde was kind of born out of uh, the show's preceding uh, Highway 61 revisited. You know, when he went electric in Newport. And then kind of toured America and Canada with, with the Hawks, and uh, his voice was developing all through that period up until, till the time he recorded this, and it results in a very kind of lazy sounding voice, if you know what I mean. But to me, it's so uh, so emotive and so provocative, and um, he once described it as a wild thin mercury sound, and whatever that means, it just you know it just fits. I mean, I, I don't even know what it means, but it just fits. Um, just fits this album perfectly, so yeah, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it was a turbulent time for Dylan this this period, and uh, all you have to do is listen to the interviews that he gave in '66, and you'll know that he was, you know, stoned most of the time, um, drunk a lot of the time. But um, to me, it's some of the, the greatest music ever made and ever created by humans. So um, you know, whatever the the uh, yeah his influences were at that time uh, whatever was going on I, I don't mind as long as the music um, sounds good and it sounds sounds brilliant to me so yeah um, yeah just uh, just a, a big fan of the mid 60s Dylan for sure um, 65 66 definitely my favorite period um, comparisons to another album or another artist. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've struggled with this question throughout the whole three responses I've done, actually, and I'm struggling again because Dylan's just so unique, and I think Mr. Hall of Fame said it as well, and, uh, and uh, Led 1995 Zeppelin said it as well, and I'm going to have to say the same thing. I can't, I can't compare this to another album. Um, it's just got so much variety that I, I dare to compare it to anything. Um, you know, in terms of the artist Dylan was, I'd probably have to compare him to... as. Mr. Hall of Fame said Neil Young is a good comparison. Both great songwriters, and the music's very different. But yeah, there are certain similarities there. But also Donovan. I mean, a lot of people call Donovan a Dylan clone, and uh, the music's. I mean, Sunshine Superman. I, I can see you know tiny parallels between these two albums, but I think Blonde on Blonde's way superior, to be honest. Um, so Donovan and Neil Young is the, is the best I got on that question. Um, in terms of uh, the cover art on this album, it would definitely, definitely rank up there in terms of uh, my favourite Dylan albums, uh, my Dylan, favourite Dylan covers, slightly behind probably Bring It All Back Home, that would probably be my favourite. Um, it just captures a different emotion in me every time I see it. I mean, uh, I love what Mr Hall of Fame said about having a kind of gritty quality to it in the background, the colours and obviously his facial expression. And uh, yeah, just it's, I can really see what he means. He put it into words brilliantly. Um, but yeah, the way he's frowning at the camera and the uh, the kind of hazy, blurry effect just really captures almost his attitude towards the music industry and the media at this time. If you know a lot about the mid '60s and Dylan, then you'll know that he got a lot of media criticism and uh, and wasn't you know terribly terribly pleased about it and. Uh, and if you've heard The Ballad of a Thin Man, he just literally rips into the media on that song. And this album develops on that and captures it. This artwork just captures it brilliantly. Um, I think this was taken in England um, in 1966 on the world tour. Um, so it just captures that messy hairstyle and that image Dylan had in that year. 
So just, yeah, a, a, a great album cover and uh, certainly memorable. Probably not quite as iconic as, as some of uh, the others we've done in this album discussion threads, but still. Um, how does it make me feel? Um, it just makes me feel amazing. I mean, uh, it just makes me feel so good whenever I hear it. I mean, uh, it just sounds like there's a song for every single occasion. I mean, um, as Mr. Hall of Fame touched on, he said, you know, there's such variety on this album. I mean, you've got bluesy songs, psych songs, catchy songs, up-tempo, down-tempo, fast, slow, emotional, sad, literally everything you could want. And obviously it's been quite a long album, 70 minutes, so he has time to, to cover all those genres. And it, he does it amazingly, so yeah, it just makes me feel makes me feel great every time I hear it, and uh, it never gets old as well. I mean, I never I haven't got bored of one song on this album, seriously, and I've heard it so many times. Um, in terms of favourite songs, um, "Sad Eyed Lady of the Lowlands" is my favourite song on the album. It's an epic love song uh, written to his uh, wife Sarah, obviously, and uh, he. he, he did, you just really get the sense that he, he really did love Sarah and uh, he wrote that song as a testament and a tribute to her and it's just just a beautiful song, just really beautiful. Just the melodies as well, how slow it is and how how patient he is on that song. Um, Vision to Johanna, I Want You, uh, Fourth Time Around, which is a, res a response to the, the Beatles' Norwegian Wood, um, implying that, that the Beatles kind of copied his style on that song. Um, but you have to look into that. Um, just too many to choose from. There's just so many great songs, and it's not really a song I dislike on the album. Um, so, uh, what format do I enjoy this this album on? Um, as I, I, I said in uh, at the start of this uh, this response, I said that I as I've um, listened to this vinyl copy, I've come to absolutely adore it. And uh, since then, I've only really heard it on vinyl. Uh, played it three or four times, and uh, yeah, vinyl's definitely the best medium to hear the song, in my opinion, especially if you get an early pressing. Um, but yeah, it's just the CD's great as well. The mono is not quite as good as the stereo, in my opinion, on this particular album. Not saying mono is worse in, on all in all cases, but yeah, um, stereo CD. I, I prefer this album in stereo, just my opinion. Um, and then, is this album an essential? Uh, no question, this album is an essential. Um, I watched the clip from High Fidelity, which Mr. Hall of Fame mentioned, and that's, uh, that's funny. Um, Jack Black saying, uh, just to reiterate what Mr. Hall of Fame said, Jack Black says, uh, you haven't heard Blonde on Blonde? Um, don't tell anybody you haven't heard Blonde on Blonde. Um, or something like that. So, <laughs> um, yeah. It's definitely an essential album, everyone should pick it up. Uh, even if you just get the CD, you'll be blown away. And uh, I think everyone has to experience this. Um, and uh, as I've said many times, this is Dylan's peak, in my opinion, at his absolute peak. And uh, maybe only matched by Blood on the Tracks, um, which is a decade later. But, uh, yeah, um, just mind-blowing. and. As I said, it hasn't got old for me. Uh, the more I've listened to it, the more I've come to love it. I mean, when I was getting into Dylan, this was one of the albums that was harder to understand for me. Do you know what I mean? Um, one of his albums that was harder to understand, but every time I listen to it, it gets better, and I notice something different, and I notice something special about this. And, uh, you know, the songwriting's superb, the, the melodies are cool. Um, and the variety is just what makes it stand out from uh, the, uh, the crop of good albums that he released around this time. Um, and slightly beats Highway 61 Revisited for me, even though that album contains Like a Rolling Stone, which is probably uh, my favourite Dylan song. So, yeah, definitely an essential and uh, definitely pick it up. Right guys, so that pretty much wraps up uh, what I have to say about Blonde on Blonde. Um, pretty much gave a, a little mini review there of it. Um, there's just so much to say, say I couldn't fit it all in. But um, yeah, thanks again to Mr. Hall of Fame and uh, Led1995 Zeppelin for their responses. Definitely head over and check their responses out. I mean, they said some really cool things. And um, yeah, I'll be back again tomorrow with my record store day purchases, hopefully. And uh, yeah, really excited about that. Um, but uh, until then, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.